I'll show you how to use Omnisphere or how I use Omnisphere in an Ableton Live based keyboard rig. So to start off with, um, I'm actually going to set my quantization to none and you'll see why later. And start off with a new MIDI track. I'm going to delete this audio track right here. Now in this MIDI track, um, I'm going to add an instrument rack. So just go ahead and drag that into there. Cool. And I am going to create a chain. So create one chain. And that's where we drop Omnisphere. I'll go rename that. I'm going to rename it to, uh, rename it to Omni Multi. And then we're going to drag in seven external instruments. And the reason why I'm saying seven external instruments is one, two, three, four, five. that up I'll show you what to do with that later so the reason why I said uh, or I told you to open seven external instruments is because when you open up Omnisphere let's open up that right now and you open your multis you see that you have eight patches or eight slots um, you could actually use these all at once using different keyboards so if you have like eight keyboards um, you could run all eight patches at the same exact time I would recommend that unless you have a really strong computer, but in theory you can do that. Um, so the reason why I told you to do seven external instruments is because we're going to use those. Um, so the first uh, first uh, chain is going to use the first slot or patch of the sphere. The seven others are going to be controlled from the external instruments. I'll show you how to do that in a second. So, um, by default, uh, these patches are set to channels 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and the outputs um, respectively A through H. Um, this way, uh, that way, um, you have completely separate patches, um, and instead of using stack or live or, uh, yeah, stack or live mode, you can just use um, Omnisphere just like a, a tone generator. Cool. So let me just load in some random patches here. This is a Peter James patch. Shout out to Peter James. Doubt he would watch this video, but just taking my chances. <laughs> All right. Cool. So these are just random patches I created, some I bought. Um, so I I'm not going to go down the list. I'm just going to do three just for. Uh, demonstration purposes. So, um, for your first external instrument, I'm going to actually rename this so it's easy. Cool. All right, we'll rename it only multi. And your first external instrument, I'll rename it that to. I'll just make it real simple. Let's go. All right. So, except for example, I go down the list and go all the way down to eight. So this is going to be. I'll just call it slash one because it's going to use the first patch. All right, number two, we're going to select the MIDI two Omni Multi, which is that. And then um, see how it says one to six through sixteen, but there's only um, there's only eight slots. So I don't know why you would go all the way out to sixteen. Maybe in a different setting. I don't know, but uh, just select two for the second patch and make sure your output is to output B. So I'm assuming your um, your numbers are your MIDI channels and then your outputs are letters. So let's go to three and patch three output C. Does that make sense? Um, so pretty much 1A, 2B, 3C and this would control the first three patches. So this is the first patch, second patch, third patch. Now, to control it, um, before we create our dummy clips, if you guys know what I'm about to do, um, I'm actually going to skip a 
all of these. So not use zero, the position zero at all. Um, and then the first patch or second patch would be on position two and position three. And then you would just go down the line for the other, other batches, but I'm not gonna do that. So I'm actually gonna delete it. Um, but you can keep going when you actually do this. And so now um, my chain selector, so pretty much um, if you had a MIDI controller, you can um, map this chain selector ruler to a MIDI controller and um, change patches like that. What I usually like to do because um, I use two keyboards um, when I play live, I'll actually duplicate this. And now I can use two Omnisphere multis for an entire set and then just mix and match sounds like that. And the way, so I'll delete that. Um, the way that I do that is I create dummy clips right here. So um, these, this is a dummy clip. It doesn't have any MIDI information. It's just, I just use it uh, purely just to change my, um, my sounds. So um, if you don't see the, this envelope section um, or editor, you gotta click this button right here to show it. And then this first dialog box, select the instrument rack and chain selector. Now for this first dummy clip, um, remember I, in my chain, I didn't set anything to zero. That way I could have like an off um, clip so that in, like in an instance where I walk away from my keyboard, just hit the off, um, off clip and like if a kid comes comes by and tries to mess with your stuff, like they won't be able to hear anything and just <laughs> it makes them leave so they don't stay around. Um, second one, um, just double click to create a new dummy clip and just make sure those settings are correct and select number one. That will be your first patch. So if you want to switch to your first patch, go ahead and hit play. And you can see in your selector that it's set to the first one. All right, let's go forward. Rename this to two, and position number two. Cool. Keep going. Three. Change the color of that, and change that to position three. Cool. Now, um, and that's that's why I told you to turn your quantization off or to none, so that you could switch really, really quickly. Because if you set it to like one, you would have to wait for it to switch, and that's not something you don't. That's something you don't want to happen. So, and that's how I use Omnisphere in the key, live keyboard setting. If it was housed in Ableton Live. Thanks for watching this video, and hope to see you guys in my next one.